Mark Meckler is uh, in charge of Convention of States. He was a very close friend of Senator Tom Coburn's. And Mark, I, uh, I want to talk about Tom Coburn uh, and how you got to know him and who met whom and who suggested that he be part of this movement and what you know about him because you, you became very close to him. Yeah, Tom and I spent the last five years traveling the country together, and the very first time I met Tom was in his Senate office building. Uh, This was actually prior to Convention of States. It was during the height of the Tea Party movement, and the thing that stood out to me most about Tom and and why I knew he was so different from everybody else I was meeting in D.C., Mark, is he, he made a point of telling me I've never spoken publicly about the Tea Party movement. And he said, I want you to know it's not because I don't support it. It's because he got all these people up on Capitol Hill, and they all claim to be something to do with the Tea Party movement, and they're not. He said, you know, I've always believed in what you stand for. I just don't want you to think I'm ever trying to profit from it politically. Mm -hmm. And that was just so astounding, because everybody was trying to profit from it politically. So to hear him sort of separate himself that way, and and that was consistent all the way through. The, The whole time I knew Tom, he was just a man of principle and integrity. And, Mark, the funniest thing, the way I found out that he was going to go to work with Convention of States was I found out about it from Fox News. Literally, my wife, Patty, was watching Fox News one night. Greta Van Susteren was still on there. And, and she started yelling, oh, my God, oh, my God, Tom Coburn just said he's going to work for Convention of States. And I thought, that's absurd. I've never talked to him about anything like that. And mm-hmm. luckily, she had recorded it, rewound it. And, indeed, he was asked, well, now that you're retiring from the United States Senate, what are you going to do? And he said, I'm going to go to work for Convention of States because I think this is the only way to save the country. And I called his communications director, John Hart, and said, John, uh, I just heard this incredible thing on Greta Van Susteren. He said, yeah, I know, we did too. So that was just, you know, Tom was his own man. He was a maverick. He was known as Dr. No in the Senate for all the bad things that he stopped, all the bad spending and all the unconstitutional stuff. And, And that's how Tom and I came to work together. And um, what was he like? You spent all this time together traveling with him, man of faith, family man. Uh, how was he with other people? Yeah, honestly, the most amazing person I've ever had the opportunity to work with. He was a man of very deep faith. Uh, he lived his faith. He lived it out every day of his life. Uh, he was a guy who was very profoundly connected to his family. He was also a guy that was always humble, which is, you know, for a guy of his accomplishments, most people don't know he's a very successful businessman, and then he became a doctor, then he became a congressman, and then a senator. He didn't think of himself as anything special. He would take just as much time with a bellman at a hotel or a waiter as he would talking to a senator or the president. He's just an incredibly humble man. And, Mark, to me, I would say that the most profoundly different thing about Tom that that I learned from him more than anything else is that it almost sounds corny for me to say it, but I just watched him live it for so long is the thing that matters the most is love that Mm -hmm. you care for and that you love everybody that you cross paths with. And I remember he told me on so many different occasions, the people that are most important to love are the people that are the most difficult to love. And I, I never saw anybody live that out anywhere near the way I saw Tom Coburn live that out. When was the last time I was with both of you? Was that Williamsburg? I'm trying to remember. Uh, the, the, yeah, the last time was, was at our summit in Williamsburg. And, when, and when was that again? It's just about a year ago now. Mm-hmm. And there he was sitting at a, one of the front round tables, minding his own business, you know, cheering on the, uh, the different uh, activists in the Convention of States. You were giving them awards and praising them and encouraging them to go out and fight. And there he was. And he was fighting this cancer, and he knew he was in trouble with this cancer, didn't he? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, folks haven't had a chance to see this. They can see me interview him on stage there, and he absolutely knew that he was nearing the end. At at one point, Mark, he had told me, look, either the cancer is going to get me or the drugs will, the, the treatments. He knew that he was nearing the end. His kidneys were starting to shut down. He was not well at that event. And, in fact... When he was on stage and I interviewed him, you could tell. I mean, he was shaky, and he had written notes, which was not something Tom normally did. He had a stack of sticky notes that he was reading from, and, and they were scribbled. A little bit was his doctor's handwriting, but part of it was just how much he was struggling. And it was, uh, I would say it was the most difficult interview I've ever done because I knew it was going on. And I, I'll never forget at the very end of the interview, and it wasn't meant to be the end. It wasn't my last question, but I asked him why he kept fighting. 
you know, he was in a lot of pain, and he was really struggling, and he, he refused to stop going on the road with me. And when I would try to stop him, he would say, you know, Mark, if, if you stop me, I'm just going to be miserable at home. I'm just going to feel bad at home. I'd rather feel bad on the road. I feel better when I'm out trying to accomplish something important. And so I asked him on stage why he would do that. And I remember the look in his eyes, Mark, and it's hard to describe uh, because I knew him so well. What he was actually thinking is, why are you even asking me that? It's, it's a stupid question. I don't think it's a stupid question for most people, but to Tom it was so obvious. And his response, I'll never forget, he said, what else would I do? Mm-hmm. And that's just Tom. He, he fought until the very end, Mark. And a few weeks ago I got a text from him, and it was so Tom. He was, he was never a, a mushy guy. Was never very, I'm much more emotional than he was. And the text said, Mark, um, I'm at the end of the road as far as work. Wish I could have done more, Tom. When was that? That was about three weeks ago. Well, I'll tell you, Mark, after I spoke at that event, I went down there and put my, my hand behind his neck, and I told him, I cannot appreciate you enough. And I certainly didn't know him like you, but boy, did I like him. He was just, I just want America to know, with all this swirling around and so forth, what, what a tremendous patriot we lost. He, he's the closest... He and DeMint, really, are the two who are the closest who remind me of the Founding Fathers, you know? You know, Mark, sometimes people say to me, in regard to Convention of States, well, we we can't do this because there's nobody like the Founders. Mm -hmm. And it's so insulting to me, having had the privilege of knowing a guy like Tom. I'd put him up with Madison or Adams or Jefferson or Washington. I, I, I agree. I agree. And let me tell you, when we heard about this, it was a real punch to the gut. I mean, the, all day long, my wife and I were talking about it. It was just so horrible. But now he's, now he's out of pain, and now he's... He really believed in the afterlife, I think. So. Yeah, I mean, he knew... One of the things I, I loved so much about Tom, I had so much comfort as he was going through this process, because he would say, look, I know exactly where I'm going. I'm not worried. I'm not scared. I'm not hesitant. I'll fight as long as I possibly can, but the bottom line is that I know that I'm okay whenever that comes. Mark, I want to thank you and your beautiful wife. It's Convention of States, ladies and gentlemen. Please support it. They're magnificent. And I'll be right back. Go to conventionofstates.com, press the button, sign the petition. More importantly, get 10 of your friends to do the same. When you sign the petition, then that sends a letter to your state legislator. You go on the list in their district as a supporter. We deliver those lists to the state legislators. It means something to them.